Hello everyone, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Welcome to the Futures Market Outlook for the week starting with today, uh, May 19th, 2019. And right now it's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, so we're about six and a half hours away from the open of the Futures Markets. We still have the trade war going on and uh, we still have Iran on the table for this upcoming week. We have a lot of things that are upcoming uh, this week internationally speaking. We have the European Parliament election, uh, plus we have the federal uh, Fed meeting here in the U.S. So we do have a lot of things going on, plus things are going to start to wind down towards Thursday and Friday uh, because we do have... Uh, because we do have uh, an upcoming holiday, Memorial Day, which is next Monday on May 27th. So we're expecting lower than average volume going into, fr going into next Friday. All right, so let's start our analysis and uh, let's begin with uh, the mini Dow. And uh, I really like them. This is the weekly chart and I really liked last week's uh, last week's price action. I don't know about you guys, but it really provided that volatility, really provided some amazing day trading opportunities. Uh, we had a really, we had a really awesome week in the trading room, uh, and uh, it was just fantastic. It, it was just, uh, just what we needed. Um, that that stabilizing volatility uh, that created a lot of trading opportunities for us to buy the dips for this week. All right, so talking about buying the dip, what provides confidence is knowing uh, areas and confluence zones, and uh, these are just small portions of the equation, but to make a lot, uh, if you wanna go in the right direction of the market. So we had a really nice uh, reversal that uh, pretty much came into the 25,300, and this is a strong confluence zone here. The price zipped up, and in fact, it started to zip up starting with the 14th. Okay, so that was last Tuesday. So Monday, we had that big, the big volatility that uh, created this uh, puncture down right here into the 50 SMA. And then we had the turnaround Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday that continued higher. And then Friday, we balanced off. Uh, again, it was option expiration. So pretty much uh, expected price action to remain sideways, right? Typical uh, for pinning into uh, certain values here. So we still have an inside day on Friday. So we haven't engaged into making new highs, but we are not coming back in. So left us with the doji. I really like the setup right here. So throughout this week, if we see a print above this prior high, uh, above uh, 26,000, I expect the price to resume its trajectory higher, having a first target and a tradable void all the way to 26,250. So that's going to be a really nice tradable window. It's going to open the doors for pullback buy scenarios as we're heading into the 250. 250 is going to be again a decision point. If the price is going to slice through it immediately, and it will have another uh, projected target of 26,450, and then it will resume back into the 680, 26,680 and so higher. So I like the fact that we're stabilizing here with this doji. Okay, let's take it a step down uh, onto the daily chart, okay? Onto the daily chart, and let me show you what I'm seeing here. So obviously we have we have a retest of the prior support zone back here into the 300. You could see the cluster from uh, from this actually bull flag, from this buy setup off the 200 simple moving average that happened in February. Also, we have the same low that happened in March. And we have the, the retest here. So it was the third time where we have revisited this area and we have zipped back up. We have done a nice, so this is, 
this is the uh, this is the Monday. This is a turnaround Tuesday continuation Wednesday Thursday higher, and obviously we're running into this cluster of resistance deriving from these prior pivot highs at 26k. So that created an area of turbulence. Plus we had option expiration, so the price meandered within the prior bars high and low so this is thursday's bar right here you could see still see that we have a uh, resistance at 26 uh, 26 so 50. any consolidation at that point and i'm gonna zip it uh, uh i'm gonna zip all the way zoom in to the hourly chart so uh you could have a better idea a better feel of the area that i'm looking for this range and what range i'm looking at so bottom line is that if we trade above 26, uh, th uh, 26,000, we're starting to head higher. From minor time frames, from day trading perspective, there are going to be some resistance areas. And the first resistance area is gonna be into obviously the 26,050. Uh, which is a heavy confluence zone, like I said, deriving from these prior highs right here from uh, March. Once we trade above that area, that's gonna open the door at least into the 26,100. So from what I'm seeing on charts, uh, the Dow has, uh, again, at over 26K, we, can, uh, we have the doors open for a higher target, like I said, uh, all the way into all the way into the 140 and into the 200 and 250. But for, for the day trader, we still have to be mindful about some smaller targets that are gonna uh, that are located in 50 point increments. So we're gonna be looking at 26. This is the way they are layered out on the chart, and this is where the resistance areas are. So uh, we're gonna be looking for 26,000 digestion break above the 26,000 throughout this week definitely we need to see the price trade again above 25,900 it has been well volat this is what volatility does and it makes the price oscillate for 100 or 150 points like like butter like nothing all right, so it's gonna move probably in 50 point increments, um, depending on volatility and depending on what we have, what we will have um, uh, throughout this entire week and what, uh, how, the econ uh, how the economic calendar is gonna shift price around. All right, geopolitical, political as well, so everything that, everything that we have, okay. So from the hourly perspective, just gonna zoom in, Okay, zoom in again. And again, on um, uh, on Friday, we did take a long. We were done at about 10.30 or 11 o'clock or so, and uh, we were done for the day. And then shortly after, you could see there was a lot of meandering. I wasn't interested in anything else because it was option expiration. So I really am not a big fan of day trading on option expiration, especially in the latter half of the day towards the close. All right, so we were long biased this whole entire week. So I'm gonna exemplify this on this chart. Pretty much you have a carbon copy into the Dow and into NASDAQ as well. But since we have the bottoming effect here uh, that came in on Monday, you could see the breakdown here, double bottom breakdown. And we had the bottoming effect right here in the overnight price action. When we came into the trading session, we knew that, okay, so you know what? This is strong confluence zone from the daily, from the weekly, et cetera. And also from the monthly, we had a nice tap onto the 10 exponential moving average and we had the price reverse. So it was do doing a really nice bottoming effect into a key location. And the price action in the overnight trading session already established a higher low. Uh, the big element for the Dow and basically for all the indices were was to break minor resistance. Any time frame that you're watching, the um, I'm sorry, any chart that you're watching, any symbol that you're watching, one hour base, they all had uh, the same uh, setup. Once we navigated over 465 to 470, the projection was higher. So again, this uh, 
Uh, the price flew higher right into the next resistance pullback, shallow pullback again, a steeper pullback towards uh, the London session double tap onto the same support level so again we were long biased today we were long biased on wednesday i'm sorry we were long biased on wednesday the price moved higher again shallow pullback higher shallow pullback higher so what we can take away from this chart is that we have the bottoming effect and in fact this is a decision point where we are right now so we have the low we have the higher low higher low right here higher low and higher low right here so basically we do have the formula for a strong reversal that can actually push and create that reversal from the weekly chart should we trade above uh, this 26,000. Uh, 26,000 is like the big resistance. You can see it right here. And this is something that the price needs to fight in order to uh, ascend higher and to break above that, uh, to break above this area. And we had the grind lower here and uh, the price really struggled and the price really was trying to break through this 2600 and uh pretty much hold this area but the overnight trading session pushed it down new york trading session pushed it up uh european session pushed it down new york trading session pushed it up same here european session pushed it down a little bit in the new york trading session of uh, the new york trading session capable of stabilizing the price and back up here and back up back up back up so very very nice price action all in all, we need to see the price over trade over 25,900, and then we're gonna try to move in small increments over 26K, 2650, uh, coinciding with this prior high right here into the 2650. That's why I mentioned the fact that we're gonna be moving in small increments. After 26,050, we can uh, look for 26,100, which again is, uh, uh, is a confluence zone. And then once we achieve the 26,100, then we can start regaining those 100 point increments throughout the, uh, throughout the move. So we will be looking for larger moves within this index from uh, 100 to 200 and 300 and so. All right, so this is the game plan for the E-mini Dow. Let's check out the E-mini S&P 500. And I really like the structure of the E-mini S&P 500. Personally, this week I have been trading uh, uh the s p 500 because to me it had a better structure and a better better tradable voids than the dow did and uh than nasdaq did all right so let's take it uh let's take it four out to the weekly chart again we have the same doji you can see it right here the price is still in turbulent area uh we're still trading into the resistance from this prior high guys this is from last year uh, when the volatility has first started. So of course it's going to take some time for us to, and for the price to digest this prior high, right? So that's why it's it's having the same sort of turbulence that we had before uh, uh, at the end uh, at the end of January, beginning of February. All right, so very nice doji, very constructive with the tap right into a strong confluence area deriving from this, uh, uh, 20 simple moving average and also from these prior highs right here look at this cluster high right here throughout the month of october and november that are creating a very nice stable shelf until now into the 27 96 area so actually it's the 2800 area uh and the price just managed to uh, close very close to this high right here that back from back in january so we're still digesting this volatile zone right here and it's only normal for the for price action to react uh to react in such a manner uh if throughout this trading week we should break above the 2895 basically the 2900 level we're gonna move back up and we're gonna move back up at least into 40 to 50 point uh, 20 to 50 point move uh, and that's going to have a very nice tradable void very nice reward uh, for any buy setup that should occur uh, on a smaller time frame so that's going to create the plot the uh, that's going to create price velocity and that will definitely project the price higher into targets faster uh, bottom line is that we've closed right here, right sort of in the middle, and we still uh, we still have closed below the 10 exponential moving average and below this prior pivot high. For that reason, and again, don't forget the option expiration that had a big impact. 
Uh, I mentioned before in the Dow, and we're not going to get like in real detail like we did in uh, into the e mini Dow uh, because the chart structure is identical. So pretty much all across the board except for Russell, and we're going to tap on that as well. Um, what we see here is again a double tap tap into the support level into the 1295. We see the price reverse. Uh, trying to challenge these uh, uh, the next confluence zone that it comes at the 29 uh, uh, 2875 uh, to uh, to 2900 we did not really tap we came shy about five points from that 2900 and Friday's price action was caught uh, between Thursday's low and high, but it's still in a turbulence zone. We can see they're close right here, right into 2861.25, which is below the 50 SMA. Now, as long as we're uh, as long as we're holding these ranges, uh, we're gonna look for a break higher over 2890 for a further projection higher. Should the price come in? And I'm going to uh, zoom into the early chart to show exactly what I'm looking at for immediate price action activity. Uh, but if we break below 2850, I, I think that we may we may form a set a sell setup that may actually take the price may take the price back down to 2800. So it, it is very important for price to defend the 28, uh, 2840 to 2850 zone. Like I said, let's zoom into the hourly chart. So low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low right here. And in fact, we're trying to establish a higher low into this area. So our playground is from 2850. This is the area that we need to defend. We have plenty of resistance um, throughout this week that can create that shelf of support into the 2850. In fact, we have tried a bottom right here. The price got rejected, so the initial move in the morning, the price got rejected back into the same area, into the 50s. So we're going to be looking, the more the price is going to coil around this 200 simple moving average, the more it has room uh, for, another, for another run up into the 80s. Should we break the 50s? Again, let's see if this mini trend is going to remain intact or... Um, if it's going to be challenged by each level. So if we break below 50, there is a tradable void to 40. There is a tradable void to 30. Like I said, you know, I'm, I don't make these levels, but this is what the price is dictating. It's going to move in 10 point increments. So it's going to be a, a little bit painful to go against the trend here, but we already have the high and a lower high right here. So we're about into that area, into that decision point. So 50 is definitely going to be an area we should, we should uh, that that should that we should be very careful with. All right, let's continue with Nasdaq and uh, let's take it far out to the weekly chart. Weekly chart Doji, you could see it right here, uh, almost ch almost challenging these highs once again into the. Uh, 7650 zone uh, price got rejected it closed uh, just the tab below the 10 exponential moving average should this week uh, we uh, uh, should this week uh, be uh, strong and uh, uh, if price should break below uh, 76 uh, 7650 we're gonna project higher okay and the next target for it is gonna be 77 uh, 77 20 and 77 25 and this is gonna be the first target contingent on breaking the 7650 area um, further target out into the 7800 all right and let's zoom into the daily chart daily chart again Monday pullback Monday rotation Tuesday continuation one two three up and we're back into resistance and we're still trading. NASDAQ is still trading within the prior low high of Thursday. So we closed a little bit weaker here. So we did have weaker price action in NASDAQ than anything else on Friday. But um, let's see if we're holding this prior low right here into the 7470 7, 7, area. Should we break 7470 area? I think that we may start pulling in. And in fact, the next uh, the next target is going to be 7,300 again, 7,400 and 7,300 again. So we have to be very, very careful. Don't forget that there are a lot of things that are happening this week. There, there are a lot of things that are still on the agenda, the trade wars, China, Iran, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
um, European Parliament election. So there are a lot of things that may contribute to the price fluctuation and also that may contribute to more volatility going into this week. So uh, let's go further in into um, into the one hour chart. 7,500, again, top double bottom support right here, heavy, heavy support zone. If the price is not gonna recover off of this area, it's gonna have a cushion area of about 25 points to the price hold within this 25 points it may have a chance of recuperation but notice that the price is trading below all the moving averages that we have uh we have the 200 simple moving average right here the price is trading below it should it regain above 75.80 i think this is going to be the first time that price may recuperate and start going higher back into the 7600 back into the next target of 76.40 and so on should the price break this cushion of 75 475 well we can still see a correction back into the 50s back into the 7400 for this upcoming week all right let's move on to russell okay rty here it is and uh, let's take it far out to the weekly once again so we've been waiting for this um, um, inverse head and shoulder here pattern to break above 1600 for a long time well it came in very brief, a uh, very brief push. In fact, you could see it right here is just a peekaboo high and then the price came back in again. So you could consider this more of a shakeout, right? If you will, because the price pulled in back again. And again, the support level is gonna be 1500. Russell is continuing to range. It has really wide ranges. So fifth, you could see they're determined uh, by these uh, by these areas on these charts at 1500 and 1600. So um, if we break below 1600, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 1500, yes, we're going to come in and 1460 is going to be the next target for it. Uh, you could trade this via options, via uh, whatever you may uh, want to use in this case because the risk associated with this trade is going to be a little high here from the weekly perspective daily charts daily charts we had uh, the big push down on to into monday and then we had one two three up back into the 200 sma and notice that russell i love the best for last notice that russell has already triggered a sell setup Strong resistance right now becomes 1570, so it'll lower the pressure from 1600 to 1570. And we already have the reversal that came in daily reversal, triggering a sell, a sell setup on the daily chart that already pushed the price lower. So if the price is not going to defend the 30 to 40, 30 to 40 level. Things are gonna get very choppy, and remember that Russell has been our barometer since last year, since the volatility has started, and pretty much all the indices are, have been following Russell. Bizarre, but true. So um, again, it needs to defend the 30s. If it doesn't defend the 30s, it has a tradable void all the way to 1520s and 1560, 1516. So that's gonna be, we break 16, definitely we're gonna come in back into the 15. 15 is gonna be the big pressure point for lower that is gonna accelerate the move. And it may accelerate the move, like I said, to 1450 and even to 1400. So that's gonna be uh, a big watch for us. From the hourly perspective it, perspective, it has relative weakness, okay? So we did have, this is the Monday reaction, Monday down, look how far it went down, it went further than any other index and it was uh, uh, extremely declined on uh, on Monday. It, uh, and then it reversed, higher low, higher low, higher low. And right now you could see the declining 200 simple moving average that is uh, creating selling pressure at this point at the 1560 level. So again, the area that it needs that um, Russell needs to defend is between 30 and 40 area. So at, if Russell is going to defend this area, we could possibly see an attempt at a push higher. Definitely 1560 is going to be the uh, the bullish area. Once the price is going to trade over 1560, we're going to try to be more proactive into uh, into bullish territory, uh, and that's with confirmation. Uh, 
I want to talk a little bit about relative strength and weakness uh, because we're talking about Russell. You could see that Russell uh, was down one point, almost 1.5%, 1.5%. Um, 1 anyway, so um, notice that it was the most declined index followed by NASDAQ, which was 1.16% minus. And uh, we had the least decline index, which was the Dow. The Dow 0.38% that was on um, Friday and also the S&P 0.60%. All right, two more to go. And I'm just gonna touch very briefly on gold and crude right here. So uh, gold, I'm gonna take it to the weekly chart. It's still trading within this uh, this range between 60, uh, actually 67 to 1300. It triggered a little bit higher. I was watching it for a possible long uh, right into this area, but again, I did not uh, I did not pull the trigger, did not initiate any trades. You could see an inverse candle to the downside. I think that if we open and trade below 70, we're gonna try to accelerate lower back into the 60s and possibly into the 50s. That would be the next target. Uh, from the daily perspective, very choppy. You could see that it down, up, down, up. So still holding support here into the 70s. We have uh, pretty much a nice uh, flat 200 simple moving average. I'm not gonna attempt to do anything with uh, gold as of right now. I'm just gonna let it test, retest, do whatever it wants until it provides a much better, uh, much better trading opportunity for me. Like I said, I would, I would have really liked it above that 1300. It didn't really stabilize above the 1300. So it just uh, pushed up, did a peekaboo high, didn't find any buyers at this and came in rather strong uh, throughout the last four days of the week. So I'm just gonna leave it al alone, crude. Crude continues to be super strong. <coughs> Excuse me, it has been consolidating at the $60 area, a pretty wide range. Uh, so again, it, 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 it's a bit difficult uh, to trade if you have a smaller account. Uh, what I, One thing that I like about it is that it's tra trying to uh, trying to reverse and is trying to regain the uptrend right here. In fact, the weekly chart is something that I follow and I we have a very nice uh, uh, price reversal with a pullback buy off the 10 exponential. Also price closed above the 20 uh, above the 50 simple moving average. Uh, $63 by $60. Again, it's not for all pockets. Uh, even using minis, it's still gonna be, minis are about half the size of the regular contract, so that's gonna be a super wide risk level, all right? So um, if you're looking for a tighter risk, um, again, you can look for the daily chart, but uh, um, you can look on the daily chart, and we're gonna go to that in just a second, uh, but definitely you wanna see the price hold this area at least into the uh, at least into the 62s. You don't want to see it go back into the 60s and then we may see if we have another setup that may be uh, sitting around. So again, uh, we're going to be looking and if you cannot trade the weeklies, again, the weekly charts, um, which that's where the setup happened, uh, then the next best thing is to look towards smaller time frames as a daily four hour or even one hour. All right, and that may offer us a better trading opportunities. So now we're trading on the daily, but look at the close here is below the 20 SMA. So that tells me that I need to wait a little bit for um, smaller, for a smaller trade. So you can see here that we came in, so we revisited the high, and this is a normal price action activity once we get the roll. Uh, definitely there's more volatility until uh, until price settles. So I think that perhaps this week is gonna be the week where we're gonna be looking for the price to stabilize, definitely above 62. See what I mean about 62 level? 62, once you uh, come into the early chart, you have the 62 level right here. Uh, you have a strong confluence area into this level, and ultimately you want to see the price hover higher, right, at the breakout point. And remember, the breakout point was 63, right? So you want to see the price 
meander within at least less than a dollar within the 63 uh, area. Uh, I'm going to take it to the four hour to the four hour chart. If if we trade and if uh, crude is going to trade over 63.75 to 63.80, this is going to be a long and the projection is going to be into 60 target areas. Target areas, first target area is going to be $66. Actually, first target is going to be 64.75. The second target is going to be 65. The third target is going to be 66, uh, 66, 66 and 66.50. All right, this is what I see. All right, everyone, this is all for today. It's been a quite long video, 30 minutes. Uh, enjoy the rest of the Sunday and uh, remember that you don't have to trade alone. You want to trade with us, join us at Trade Out Loud. You can join our trading room, trading and mentoring room, which is open from uh, 9 o'clock till 4, uh, uh, 9 a.m. 9 Eastern till 9, uh, I'm sorry, till 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern. You can find more information on our website. Just hit the tradeoutloud.com and hit the trading room tab. You're going to find more details there of what we trade and how we trade. Uh, also, we have a transparent portfolio with all the trades that we take into the trading room. So feel free to visit that page, the performance portfolio, where all the trades are posted. Uh, if you are interested in our trading methodology uh, and if you're interested in learning how to trade so you could take these trades on your own and analyze the market, know how to analyze the market, know what a setup is, uh, know everything from A to Z. Uh, we have a class for that. It is a very comprehensive five-day class that we teach. So if you want more information on that, you could visit our website as well. And uh, also, uh, feel free to email us, no obligation, uh, and uh, email us. We'll send you the full class curriculum. Wouldn't it be awesome to learn a skill that is going to la last you a lifetime? Uh, I mean, think about it. So uh, if you're interested in any of our products or services, email us at info.tradeoutloud.com. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Hope you have a very profitable trading week ahead. And uh, keep in mind, next week we will not have a new video due to the holiday, but we're going to be back in touch in June. So have a great week, everyone, and see you next time.